What's up, my wealthy people? How's everybody doing today? Happy, happy Sunday. Welcome to the Black Wealth Project. The Black Wealth Project is the project where we talk about all our black wealth, black money, black finance, and even a little bit of black politics and even a little bit about culture to round up the whole black wealth experience because it takes all things. It's not just about money. So as we get into this, we're going to talk about a couple of things today. The primary topic of today's show is going to be, should we celebrate Kwanzaa? and all these other curious things that surround Kwanzaa. So as you follow in, as you come in, let us know who you are. Let it, let us know where you're um, watching from and let us know what y'all think about Kwanzaa. Should we celebrate Kwanzaa? But before we get going too far, I just want to say what's up to the team. How's everybody doing tonight? You're, what's good? You're, how, you, how you feeling, ma'am? Doing good? Hello, hello. All right, all right. So a little tired, man. I was I was up to five a.m. on Clubhouse, uh, you know. What I'm <laughs> if you if you follow if you follow your guidelines, being vegan to the weekend, you should have full of energy. Man, listen, it doesn't matter. You don't get no sleep. Uh, have you been Have you been a vegan to the weekend? You been staying in practice? Uh, not, not this week. Uh, this this week I was only vegan two or three days. Um, my, my wife, she actually found these uh. These mushroom noodles, it tastes like they taste actually it tastes really good. They're kind of like it can remind you like an angel hair pasta. They're really good. So she had some of that, some other stuff. But yeah, I was vegan like two or two or three days this week. I forget how many. All right, that's a valiant effort. You got to care. Slim down a little bit though. Yeah, no, nah, I probably haven't. <laughs> <laughs> there goes that comment. <laughs> no more compliments from the leak. <laughs> you gotta share in the group chat the information on those noodles because we got. I, I got I'll ask her. I'll ask her what it is. I'll send them. Be yeah, listen. The, the mushroom noodles they they don't taste horrible. Like that's they're like angel hair pasta. It's not. It's not bad at all. Okay. Okay. I'm. I'm here for it. Okay. All right. So listen, folks. We are going to talk about Kwanzaa. Right? Should we celebrate Kwanzaa? Um, and all those other curious, curious things that go on in and around Kwanzaa, all right? So before we get started, I want to ask y'all, okay. oh, you know what? I'm messing up my order. I'm messing up my order. So Malik, you have you have B.O.B. of the Week, Black Owned Business of the Week, correct? That I do. That I do. All right. Who you got? All right. I'm, I'm trying to stay uh, shared in my joint. So I have the legend, the legend, Ed Hip. A lot of people don't know that Ed Hip uh, Premium Meats is a is a is a, 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 a black gentleman uh, from Philadelphia area, and um, you know some of the best turkey bacon, turkey scrapple, uh, beef bacon. His his hot sausages are good. Like you know, I'm vegan to the weekend, man. But you know, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not opposed to some Eddie Hip, some Ed Hip uh, turkey bacon, turkey sausage on the weekend. So you can check it out. You know, I don't even know if you could order off offline, but if you're getting around like the tri-state area, you definitely got to try out uh, some Ed, some Ed Hip. I mean, first Ed off, Hip. you said some of the best, and I, I got to push back. It's not some of the best; it is the best. The like, best. I, I don't I've know never, I've better. never had. Yeah, I've never had anything better than Ed Hip, y'all. No, no, like, listen, I, I can't front everything. It's his sausages are amazing. His turkey bacon is impregnable. You know, like, <laughs> when I found out that he was black, I like did the Ray Lewis dance. I was like, hold up. Correct. Correct. <laughs> nah, listen, Ed, Ed Hip, he's um, and I wonder, are his kids, he's getting older now. He's been making meats his pie for 50 years already. Yeah. You know, I wonder. Are his kids running the business? What's going to happen with that? I'm, I'll be curious to find out. And I also be curious is how difficult is it to him expand in the other regions outside of this, this region? I mean, yeah, it looks like he's focused out here in the Philadelphia, New Jersey, Delaware area. Yeah, does he want to at this age? I know he was in talks with um with Walmart. Um, I think it was like last year. I don't know what had happened with it, but you know, listen, he's a legend and. Nobody's better at what he does. No, nobody's better. Nobody's that better. Might, that might be a wholesale opportunity for us. <laughs> a wholesale? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We can buy his products and deliver them to other other regions in the area. So that's a good that's a good idea if we hire a young boy to do it. But that's too much work for me. I'd invest. Though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Malik. I gotta say this, man. I'm impressed that you are true to your word. You like I ain't trying to do a whole lot of work. 
I done did my work and I'm trying to say to that. And, and, you know, speaking of clubhouse, because I see Elizabeth's here talking about she's mad at clubhouse, but Jimmy and Corey, well, no, I think not, not Corey, but Jimmy, and it was a bunch of us. I think Aisha Sheldon was on and some others, but Jimmy made a good point. And I think it's something we all need to think about. We don't just need to work to try to make the greatest amount of money. We should be working to figure out what's going to bring us the most amount of joy. And Jimmy made that. And, and you know, I, I thought about that, but when he said it, because there was another brother in there talking about he wanted to be a super duper billionaire and do all these things. And he was still kind of young in the game. And the one thing Jimmy said, dropped on him and said, what's going to make you happy? And I know a lot of times, a lot of us are carrying around a lot of baggage, a lot of emotional and psychological baggage. And a lot of that comes from how hard we're working and where we're working at as well. So that's the thing. Hey, Courtney, how you doing? All good? Hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what's up, y'all? <laughs> it's been a day. It's been a day. So I left my charger somewhere. And so I can't be on my computer. So I'm on my phone. But then, yeah. So here we are. I mean, okay. Turn the landscape. Turn, we, turn we, the landscape. We were talking right about and hit meats. And I know that you like the, you know, you, right now you eat mostly meats, right? He's talking to you, Courtney. What happened? <laughs> you, you, we were talking about Ed Hit Meats. Are you familiar with Ed Hit Meats? Nah, Malik, we just going to move on. We're going to move on. So listen, everybody, today's conversation is going to be about Kwanzaa again. Should we celebrate Kwanzaa? So I want to get the panel's, the panel's input on this real quick, starting with uh, Courtney. What do you think about Kwanzaa? 30 seconds. Um, what I think about Kwanzaa, I think it's just a great um, celebration of culture. I think it's something that we need to embrace. But I think the conversation that even how we got here about, you know, should we celebrate Kwanzaa is because um, the founder has some interesting background that I think, you know, people think like, oh, because we have a purity test in our community. The question is, is that, you know, should we should we celebrate it because he was, you know, considered to be. Uh, you know, informant for the FBI or the CIA or whatever government um, involvement he's ever had. So the question, that's the big question. Um, but I think we can't ignore the, the what value it brings to the community. So should we celebrate it? Absolutely. Um, should we talk about the things that kind of go around um, that are around the founder? Absolutely. But that doesn't cancel out the, the whole idea of what it has um, done and does bring to the community. Okay. Malik, what you got on this? So I, I will admit you changed my mind. I really wasn't on it until one day you convinced me to be on Kwanzaa. Uh, he says about the substance, not the man. And so I, I know said that. That you said that. Yes, you did. This was probably like five years ago. I, I want y'all to put this on record that Malik actually gave Oh, me man. Hold up. Let's, 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 yes, let's yes, we can <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, not, so, so, so that's it. So now, no, I know I don't, I don't, uh, I no longer hate Kwanzaa. Actually, I met, I met bro. I met bro. He came to uh, Freedom Theater, man, maybe about 30 years ago. He was at Freedom Theater talking about Kwanzaa and um, about the holiday back then. And, um, you know, Freedom Theater, you know, we, we, we miss you. I'll say that, Freedom Theater. But um, so now, like I said, because of you, Kamari, I don't, I don't buy the candle set and all that kind of stuff, but I no longer... Uh, dislike the holiday or the the cultural celebration. All right, cool. Tracy, what you got on this? So I'm a fan of Kwanzaa. I'm a fan of the principles. Um, I grew up in a space. Uh, shout out to Ivy Lee. Yes, um, yes. For, <laughs> for teaching about um, uh, the the Nguza Saba and the principles behind Kwanzaa. And the fact that it is a cultural celebration and not a religious celebration um, that is still pertinent to our community today. And I definitely feel like there are a lot of speakers, there are a lot of um, books and business plans and rollout plans for leaders in our community who still push a lot of the agenda that still speak to uh, the principles of the Nguru Saba, and I am a fan of all of those points because they are necessary and they're needed in our community. Okay, Corey, what you got? What you got? I mean, I'm a fan of any cultural celebration that that highlights Black people. Um, I'm not a fan of commercial holidays, so 
you know, holiday, smiley, but I, with the cultural piece of it, I'm a big fan of. So I really, you know, for those people who do celebrate holidays and, and, and are, you know, into that kind of stuff, that, that is the kind of perfect celebration for those, you know, for those kind of people. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Jimmy, what you got for me, sir? First and foremost, I want to shout out y'all because um, our group are one of the only people on Chat House having conversations with real substance. So I want to shout y'all out first and foremost. Um, <laughs> in terms of Kwanzaa, though, uh, I think the principles are very powerful. Um, you know, we had this conversation, decided to bring it to this platform because we were talking about the uh, shady past of the founder of Kwanzaa. But you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. And a, a point that was brought up uh, during our clubhouse session uh, a little bit earlier, um, I think the brother's name was Jay. Was it Jay? And he said that um, if you look at you know someone's work, you know at, you have to give people a chance to uh, kind of correct their behavior. And the brother had been putting in community work for thirty plus years um, since his incident. And but when you look at Kwanzaa overall, I'm, I'm for it. Um, as Tracy said, uh, I'm also a product of Ivy Leaf. So we celebrated Kwanzaa. You yeah, know, we, we grew up with that. So um, I'm all for it. And, and the thing is, if you look at those seven principles, right, they're very powerful. And it is a culture thing. It's not a re- it's not a religious thing. It's a reason it's a 26 um, starts at 26. You can actually celebrate Christmas if that's your thing and still participate in Kwanzaa. And I just want to put out this. So one, uh, somebody said it um, during the clubhouse. Like Kwanzaa celebrations are the best too. Have you ever been to a Kwanzaa celebration, yeah. a real Kwanzaa yeah. celebration? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. If you ever they been to a real it. Kwanzaa celebration, they, they get to it. So I'm all for it. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right. So I just add my input into it. So I am definitely a Kwanzaa fan. I was raised around Pan Africans. I had the the benefit of being around a Pan African school, so I didn't go there. But it was an independent freedom school. It didn't have the same illustrious history as um, Ivy Leaf, but it's definitely produced a lot of great people and a lot of great people who are doing work in the community. And so that I was about to say the name of the school. Oh, and Thamo Sasa. So in Thamo Sasa was the name of the school. Again, it's produced a lot of good people, um, people that work at the presidential level, again, kind of raised all around these pan-African principles that Dr. Maulana Karinga, Karinga created. But before we go any further, let's talk about what exactly Kwanzaa is, where it came from, right? So Kwanzaa is an annual celebration that Dr. Maulana Karinga created. He was inspired by a Zulu celebration and then decided to bring that type of celebration here to us in the United States. Now, Kwanzaa is not just celebrated in the United States, it's actually celebrated worldwide. And it's kind of anchored around the seven principles of, of Kwanzaa or the Nguzu Saba, which means seven principles. All right. And so those principles are uh, unity, self-determination, collective work, responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. All right. So I think, you know, if we really are serious about community work, whether you're working in schools, working in politics, working in social work, if you really kind of ground yourself around those seven principles and we really internalize those principles, we can create a better community for all our folks, right? But again, it's a, it's a group effort. It's not an individualized effort. This, I mean, this project, right, the Black Wealth Project embodies all seven of those principles. I mean, it takes unity for us to get here. We might not all agree, but we agree with the overall mission. And that mission is to bring a higher level of conversation to the Black community as it relates to wealth. We're like a think tank, so to speak, right? Self-determination. Every Sunday, we, we said we're going to do this. We're not waiting on somebody to pick up to have these conversations. We picked ourselves to have these conversations. And everybody here has already done some level of community work, right? So we said we're all qualified to do this and have these conversations. Again, collective work and responsibility. Again, every Sunday we're here, somebody has something to do um, and some kind of responsibility pool. Nia, which is purpose. Again, we're here. We have a purpose. We we communicate that. Creativity. If anybody knows that we joke around, right? But Jimmy calls himself the meme king, right? He's <laughs> doing his art, right? That's a form of creativity. And that form of creativity definitely resonates in the Black World Project. And faith, Imani, right? We believe that we are faith. Well, we're faithful that we were going to make a difference in the people who we're broadcasting live to. We're going to make a difference to the people that we interact with and the community as it relates to black wealth and just black love and black unity overall. So we embody all those principles. The question is, how do we get more people to start embodying those? But I don't want to get 
too far away because I'm biased, right? I don't want to get too far away from the topic at hand. Again, the topic at hand is should we celebrate Kwanzaa and all the other curious things that go around it? I do notice that you you didn't uh, you actually um, didn't use the Swahili terms at time. You didn't try to say those out loud. <laughs> you know what? Because I was actually mad, right? I used to have to recite those all the time and knew them fluently. And then I guess I'm getting older and I jacked them up. But I'll I'll, I'll, probably, I'll probably bounce into it at some point later on in the broadcast. <laughs> I'll watch you do it because I, I I fumble over them too. I try though, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's just practice, right? Probably, but, be. But, I mean, I, I know him. I know it's a mojo, Kuji Jakalia. I, I like the word Kuji Jakalia. Um, yeah. I do too. I do too. But I, I this, okay, right? go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Monica is in the building and she said Jumbo. So I want to greet my Jumbo. sister. The proper response is see Jumbo. All yeah. right, so see see Jumbo to you, Monica. Thank you for joining as we check in with everybody that's here. Again, we appreciate you all being here. Roby's in the building. Hey Roby, how you doing? Hey. Hey Ruby. Hi hi. Elizabeth is here. Hey girl. What's going Karan's on? in the building. What's up, Karan? Hi hi. All right, so Elizabeth's got a problem. She says, "I'm annoyed that Clubhouse is the on is only for iPhone at the moment. <laughs> I refuse to get an iPhone." You sound like hey. you sound like one of our group members right here. Me. <laughs> hey, actually, two, two of the group members, man. But so listen, oh. you got, like, oh. in three or four months there'll be an iPhone app more than likely. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Android, yeah. But I will yeah. I will say this for my purposes, I went out and I spent the money on the iPhone specifically to get on Clubhouse. And I'm not gonna front like I got my money's back at least 10 times over from the information that I've gained out of that out of that place. Awesome. We probably but nobody wants to talk to somebody with an Android. Can we really talk about that? Like you mess up the whole group chat. The whole oh, oh. <laughs> 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 that's, that's I like something. It just can we come I mean, I, I, that's that's right. That's right. here's the thing though. Here's the thing though, right? You know, I'm I'm like Kevin Gates, right? So I got two phones, but I actually like my Android phone better than my iPhone. I mean, keep it a bean with you. But, Yo, I, you know, do I do too. I do too. Hold on. Nobody Jenny, cares. Which phone care. is for the plug? <laughs> that's the Galaxy Note, but I got the <laughs> iPhone. You know. All right. So, but yeah, Elizabeth, just to echo it with um. What Malik said, the Android release is supposed to be out soon. Supposedly, there is an Android release in the Play Store or the Google Store, whatever you call it, because I'm actually Team Apple. But there is one supposedly there. They say it's not that great. So I guess Clubhouse is working on it. We're going to be there's able to cook there's out. There's actually, a, there's actually a room in Clubhouse protesting uh, Android users getting on that. Listen, we're we, <laughs> oh, we, wow. we going to be at, gonna be at the cookout by that time anyway. Yeah, for yeah sure. how about that? How about yeah, yeah. that? Hey, Adrian, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Adrian, that is that scrap, but that's turkey scrapple. It's it's totally different. I will say this: I used to eat the turkey scrapple. I don't know if she knows the scrapple isn't anyway. I think that's that what it is. Are you saying that what is it, or are you saying why do we like scrapple? What do I like? What do I like scrapple? Well, Adrian's from Chicago, so it's a strong possibility she has no idea what even scrapple is. Yeah. That's a strong. Yeah, possibility. Adrian, let it let us know if you don't or do know what scrapple, scrapple that word. Turkey scrapple that is. That's fire. Yeah. Who's turkey eating turkey scrapple? scrapple? That's like oh. Turkey scrapple. Oh, Ed Hips, Ed Hips, anything Ed Hips turkey. I don't care what it is. It it's fire. Some turkey scrapple. I, I slice it thin, let it get crispy. Come on, talk, man. Talk to him. Listen, man. <laughs> Ed, yeah. 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 Ed, yeah. Ed Hips is a legend, yeah. man. Really talk to him. Listen, man, the Black Wolf <laughs> cooking show coming soon. But listen, though, <laughs> Ed, Ed, Ed Hips is a legend, man. Anything that like they, they do, I'm telling you. And for a long time, I even know it was a black guy. And I found that I literally celebrated. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. And not only that, I didn't know they were they were black. I didn't know that they were from Philly. So that's a double. That's, that's, that's a, double. Yeah, double up. Time double for up. the percolator. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right, Corey. You, you aging ah, yourself oh. with that one, doggy. Yeah, right. All right. So Elizabeth says, "Preach finding joy and prosperity is a thing." Thank you for sharing that, Joel. But, um, brother, if y'all screen record that these clubhouse meetings for those of us in the Android <laughs> world, who will be eternally grateful for you? Listen, I can't, I can't screen record twelve hours. Yeah, it's, it's too much. It's too much conversation. You guys will get there. You'll be there soon. Hey, but Ooh. actually, what you could do, um, I'm not even gonna plug, bro. But somebody got a, uh, uh, it's clubhousenotes.com. And yeah, or MJ or M something. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Matt, Matt, uh, Matty J, you know, and you don't have to pay for it if you don't want to. So it's, it's on Gumroad. It's pay what you want, you know, and they'll give you all the notes from the Gumroad um, conversations. And they're on there. They've been on it for four days straight. The same room, pretty much, almost. 
Well, I don't know if they would do. Are they doing hours as well? No, I think that's just his room, though. No, it's just that's their room. Yeah. It's, it's just he's the rooms that he's in. He actually hires somebody to take notes in these rooms. I actually, I actually brought the notes, so um, I see them, and it, it's, it's a lot of rooms. I don't know if it's all rooms, but it's a lot of them. So I right, shout out to Nairobi. What's up, Nairobi, what's up? Hey, what's going so on? Nairobi, Nairobi was over in the clubhouse with us, folks. So dropping jewels. Hey, hey Nairobi, not, not man, you better hurry up. I know all these Philly cats talking about coming to Baltimore. You better buy some more. Listen, Nairobi, Nairobi was on Clubhouse with us on Friday. We had, I was telling Kamar we had an amazing room Friday. It got hijacked, but we did have an amazing room. <laughs> it got um, hijacked. I would yeah. talk about that offline. But anyway, <laughs> but the thing is, um, she dropped like some amazing jewels, right? That um I just thought were fire. And in terms of we were talking about generational wealth, but she was talking about like reaching on the side with brothers and sisters. It was powerful, but um, so salute to Nairobi. All right, shout out to Nairobi. Yes, yes. All right, Romaine J, how you doing? Romaine, what's Hello. going on? Hello. So Monica says I've celebrated Kwanzaa, but I've never made it through all seven days. I need to have a better f- follow through. That's but just, typical. <laughs> that is true, though. I've been telling you, it's like seven days it, is tough. Yeah, it is tough. But here's the thing, right? The Nguza Saba, the seven principles are for to be used every day. And That's Monica, true. I have a feeling that you and Jimmy use them every day of the week. So I, I think you're good. I think I think you're good. All right. So Karan says, uh, you're right, Jimmy. You're the one. You are the one of the few rooms I've been in that actually has substance. I appreciate Please. that. Thank you. Yo, yo, what's up, Jerry? Peace, 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 King. Hey. Peace, King. Hey. All right. So, uh, Don says I don't celebrate any major holiday, but Kwanzaa. Cool with me. All right, my man. Okay. My man. All right. The, the comments just jumped to me. All right. Adrian says I've never celebrated Kwanzaa, although I like the seven principles. Hey, listen, if you don't want to celebrate, if you don't like celebrating, but you want to embody the principles, I'm cool with that too. Uh, hey, Angela, how you doing? Hey, Angela. Hi, hi. Hi, yeah. Listen, yeah. The elitism. <laughs> but, you, but you know what? You, you, know, you, know, what's, you know what's crazy, though? Know? You know what's so crazy? The Android people are super elitist, too. I was about to say that. I was yeah. like, I ain't gonna lie. I'm a snob. I'm an Android snob, man. I think that product is trash. Hey, but, but, but listen, but, but saying that, right? How many people without means aren't don't have access to all this free information that we get in because we can afford to get the iPhone? I mean, I, I have an iPhone, but is is I, I put it in the closet when I'm not on Clubhouse. But no, but right, I don't but, even want to look at that's it. A, what I'm is, that's so a privileged good. statement. You have it privilege is. to have an iPhone that you can do in the closet. So the people that can't that can't afford an iPhone. Or don't have the I'm not mad at people that can't afford an iPhone. I'm not disparaging them. I'm just saying is you don't like yeah, he, ex- he, he exercising his black privilege, man. That's right. Yeah, sure. No, I'm just saying, I'm just, right, I'm so just saying that that's a tough a so, tough spot, man. So all, all this all this free game is for privilege. Hold on, Malik. Scrapple is terrible. I only buy it because <laughs> me and King likes it. <laughs> Stop hating, yo. Scrap was right. You know, I, like right. I like that shade. I like that shade. Y'all ever said about she was from Philly? I thought she was from Philly. Like everybody from Philly likes Scrap. Like, no, like, no, like, no, 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 no. We don't. No, we don't. That is not a true statement. That is not a true statement. That is not a true statement. Turkey Scrapple. No, I don't like Scrapple at all. I'm not a terrible person either. Oh my God. All right. Yo, yo. Sorry. Sorry. All right. Hold on. Hold on. We can't all talk at the same time, y'all. Y'all know it don't work well. All right. So Adrian says, I've never heard of Scrapple. All right. Well, I get it. Try it sometimes. I'll, I'll ship you some, some turkey Scrapple from Ed Hips. Black owned. We got to support, support black owned businesses. All right. So, all right. So, Ruby says he's frozen. All right. Reboot. Reboot. Uh, Brianna says, Can somebody explain what Clubhouse is? Go ahead, y'all. It's the, old, it's, the, it's the old school uh, party line. It's basically the old school party line for adults. And the app, yeah, pretty much. And the app. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's a good description. With a little side of podcast talk radio mixed in. Yeah. Yep. Facts. All right. Hey, Demetrius, my family is celebrating Kwanzaa for the third year, and we are celebrating with more black families this year. Great. Highly important with practice the principles daily. My children love it. Absolutely. That's dope. That's dope. So, that other, 
All right, so Ruby sent us an app. Yeah, you can talk to people. Yep, that's what you can do. Why the, or why the iteration for Android? There's an no, app. You, you, have, you have the I did it too. You have the golf app. You're, you're right now the clubhouse app you have. You can book your tea time. All right, so all right, so listen, listen, but y'all, but y'all want me to wait for four months to get access to these jewels. By the time she get on, everybody gonna be off. Yeah, nah, I don't believe that. The, I do. the, the download the app store has uh clubhouse ranked as number six in the app store right now i don't that's think without access that's crazy right. Right. That's, 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 i'm talking about like like this level of transparency right dead in four months well we're gonna be on a cookout anyway so cookout yeah i'll be doing both hold on jimmy as soon as we get through this i want you to explain to people what the cookout is too all right so yes courtney born and raised in, in swamp poodle heights aka allegheny west <laughs> Come Yo, listen, I used to live in Allegheny West. Swamp Poodle Heights. Uh, Yo, I live, I live like three blocks from there, and I, I never heard the term Swamp Poodle. <laughs> Yo, yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I, I saw the signs. I'm like Swamp Poodle Heights. And they get some the hell is that? Wait, 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 wait. Our folks don't call it that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's real. No, that's real. That's real. They got signed, yeah. they got signed up and everything. Oh, yeah. listen, it's it's good going down over the side, dog. Yeah. But, but that just goes to my comments about streets and neighborhoods not being named by the post office, but actually the people in the communities. There's I, a good there's a video on YouTube. It was a guy who was down like uh, I think it was part of Kensington where he talked about he bought all this property and he started putting up signs and renamed the neighborhood and literally start charging more. I, I'll find it and share it with everybody, but no, so yeah. there was one guy down Kensington. He was trying to rename it as, as something, right? And they, uh, they're like, "Nah, bro, get those signs down." That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm. That's what I'm talking about. Because he was, he bought some property. He was trying to do that, and um, he yeah. was trying to like raise the value. But it's a video of that. It was crazy. But yeah, so Jimmy, so Jimmy, real quick before we jump, before we jump into the uh, conversation, can you tell everybody what the cookout is? All right, so the cookout is an app that's very similar to Clubhouse. I don't know if the guy started it before or after, but it's uh it's owned by a brother, it's a black owned guy. Uh he actually is on Clubhouse <laughs> promoting the cookout, and several other people are as well. Um, so it is hasn't been released yet, uh, but the beta version is supposed to be coming very soon, but it's black owned. So y'all know what that means, right? When it comes out, we gotta support it. We gotta support it. Yeah. All right, so so let's jump into the meat. This is gonna be the topic. Courtney came up with this idea. Kind of based off of me putting out there that I wanted to do a Kwanzaa celebration, and then Corey and Jimmy started jokingly uh, making jokes <laughs> about, about the founder of Kwanzaa being an informant. So, Courtney, uh, tell, tell the folks what inspired you to do this. So, the the conversation was that we were so excited, Kamar, you were very excited, and as always, you're very excited about Kwanzaa. And so, we were like, "Oh, we're going to do a Kwanzaa show," and I was like, "Um." And then Corey and Jimmy got into, hey, you know, wasn't he an FBI informant? And I was like, whoa, that's that's a lot, y'all. So then no. the question is, is that because we have this kind of purity test, like I shared earlier, is that can we, you know, rightfully celebrate Kwanzaa if we, if this guy, if the, the founder has this kind of cloud around him? But I also think there's a lot of different things in the community that kind of have the same conversation around them. Like we, in general holidays, like Corey was talking about earlier, we were talking about Thanksgiving. We were talking about Columbus day, all the curious holidays that yes, I'm going to take my day off, but like, should we really be celebrating them? And Kwanzaa definitely does not fall in that bucket of, you know, genocide and, you know, pillaging like, uh, <laughs> like, um, Thanksgiving and Columbus Day, but still, it's still kind of, it's, it's a conversation to be had. And it's a conversation to be had about a lot of things that, you know, there's duality in the culture. And I think that that's something that we really need to discuss. So that's kind of how we got to the curious things. But in the in our clubhouse conversation, it went like, it went really off the rails, but that's kind of, it kind of captured the whole idea of the curious thing, but it wasn't off the rails in a, in a bad way. Facts, facts, facts. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I was just saying, you know, in, in in our neighborhoods, we call people, you know, who inform us ratatouille. And so that, that that never goes away. That never goes away. And so that's why we had to put the curious things and all of that on there, because, you know, the, the neighborhood got the no snitching policies. And so when you're an informant in, in a no snitching culture, that kind of 
you know, put you on the outskirts of everything that goes on. Not that I, you know, promote the no snitching culture, but when you're an informant in that kind of culture, you know, your name never going to be clean. So actually, I want us to do a no snitching show because I actually believe that the no switch snitching rule is actually killing our community in a lot of different ways. But I'll say that for another time. But I'll say this about because, again, we're talking about Dr. Mylana, Mylana Karenga. He got locked up in 71 and released in 1975. He was uh, in prison because of kidnapping charges. Right. <laughs> However, right, kidnapping and all kinds of other craziness as well. Um, however, they believe that the person that they were torturing was an informant and was actually trying to poison him. And as we all know, during COINTELPRO times, that COINTELPRO infiltrated every black organization, every civil rights organization. And I just feel like a lot of times we don't know what to believe. Um, so what what do y'all do? Y'all have anything else on this or what do y'all think? I, I mean, so this this conversation is. uh it's very nuanced and it's a lot of context, right? So yes, um, they poisoned, it was him and his wife, his wife like sat on the young lady or, you know, on the lady's back while he, he poured like water down her throat or something. They were like torturing this, this, this lady, another black woman. And <clears throat> he was arrested, you know, did his time. And the rumors at the time was he was an FBI informant. But, but the thing is, you're right. And that, that's why so much context, because was he set up? Was he really an informant? Uh, was that person really trying to poison him? Um, but also he was attacking a sister. So, but my point is, I don't think any of that matters as it, as, as it relates to the celebration of these seven principles, but it is, a, it is a conversation, which leads to a conversation that we have in our community overall, that a lot of us, we throw the baby out with the bathwater. People do, do, do good work. And sometimes because of, you know, um, their past in this instance, because after he got out, you know, from all accounts, he did nothing but give back and give to the community. So how do we look at his past transgressions when he spent this entire time since getting uh, coming home doing nothing but serving black folks? Right. Um, the but conversation but earlier. But technically, before he went in, but technically before, before he went in, he was serving black folks. Too. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's true. That's true. But I mean, you know. Cause we listen. He attacked a black woman, man. That's that's problematic. That's problematic. Now, some will say, okay, yeah, but she was an informant. We have no proof of that either. Um, but it's just an interesting conversation about what do you do when someone is is doing everything to serve the community, but they may have some, um, you know, uh, what do we call it in the, in the title? Uh, other things curious. in their past. <laughs> curious, curious, curious things in their past. Things. What do we do with that, right? This leads into a conversation that you know we had earlier, which led into like you know, um. Bill Cosby and R. Kelly, like, you know, some of us still enjoy TP too, but you know, we it's it's we can't, you know what I mean? A, a different world, a different world, like literally changed my life. But you know, so it gets into this conversation when it comes to our folks. Like, how, how do we balance that? How do we balance someone that may have um some curious things, but they definitely have contributed to the culture? Well, I'll say this. Um Frank Rizzo statue just came down. Christopher Columbus statue. Did it come down or did they move it? Huh? Did it come down or did they move it? It was. It was. It's where it was. It came down and it was moved. Move. Right. You know. Move. And and you know. And then when you look at um that there's plenty of other circumstances like we still have. You I mean, know, we got slave owners on our money. So on our, on our money, on our schools, uh, on on everything. You know, all like forget the slave owners. I'm not going back that far. I'm just talking about from the Confederacy. I'm just talking about you know, um, I think they have like a Joe Arpaio way out in Arizona. It's like so, you know, when you look at, when you looking at recent history, not like the Rizzo was what 70s, 80s, like 70s, right? And so 70s, 70s 80s, and 90s. Yeah. Right, and so we context about the Rizzo's since we're talking about it because a lot of people may not be from Philly and they may not understand. Yeah, they're not from Philly. Okay, so we get we let's let's talk about with 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 Rizzo as first. Rizzo was the the district attorney, and he um or police commissioner. He was a police commissioner, (laughs) police commissioner, and then the mayor, and he was uh, notoriously harsh on um black people. 
You know, he, he targeted would, black people. He wasn't he a targeted person. them. I'm talking about he, he would he would like legit. There's there's photographs. They would legit have these gossip against the wall, start butthole naked, um, cavity searches, everything else. Police police brutality was rampant. Award like he really ran yeah. through it. He but swat my block. <laughs> he said right. swat this man this man legit got statues and murals here in the city of Philadelphia. You know, yeah. and as much violence as he caused to to black people. You know, and we complained. It was some complaints, but it wasn't like this mass outrage. We were way more outraged about, you know, uh, Bill Cosby and R. Kelly than we were at the statues of of Rizzo. Well, you know, so, uh, what I, so what I hear you saying is turn that TP two up. Listen, yeah. I'm listen. TP two yeah. ain't going nowhere. I'm jamming. I can't. I'm jamming. TP two. I'm jamming. I'm jamming. Y'all, y'all, y'all already know Malik. I can't. I can't. Cancel. 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 Well, he's like, I don't I have no idea what he's supposed to have. All right, all right, so wait a minute. So I guess we have to have this conversation. So he married an underage girl. Start with Aaliyah. Start there. Then come forward. Wait, 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 hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me finish because right. I want to give you context. You said you didn't know. Right, so right, he, right, mar- right. he married an underage young girl. That was known. He, he knew about it. She didn't lie about her age. He knew about it. Her parents knew about it. That's that's mm-hmm. one. Two, the video. Right. He said it wasn't him, but everybody else said it was him. His brother said it was him. No, his brother. No, 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 no. There's a video out there. I believe it was on that. His brother said he wouldn't do it, right? So he peed on young ladies. <laughs> the boom. By the way, anybody watched the Boondocks episode? It's I did. Yeah, well, not even at all, right? In a very hilarious way, right? So mm-hmm. he peed on young ladies, and then the last go around was he had all these young ladies trapped in a house, forged. Then one of the young ladies was on tour with her with her sister as the guardian, and they kicked her off the tour and kept the young lady there. So that's three times. Three. Three. I got daughters. Wait, wait. I, I let me ask you this. So like this, I don't, I, this, is, this should not be our Kelly show, but, I'm, but I, I do want to know this. The young woman, he did know that she was underage. That's crazy. Um, people get peed on every day, B. Uh, three, three. Let me ask you this. The people that, the people that stayed there, <laughs> the people that stayed were, were they there voluntarily? I'm gonna get your mic, dog. For real. All right, hold on, 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 hold did they stay voluntarily or did he lock them up? I don't I don't know. No, 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 the locking into rooms, like you can't speak to anyone else other than me. They'll keep your head down and your eyes down and no one else should be able to talk to you. Locking women into hotel rooms while he goes and does shows and different things. And we're also not even discussing the human rights issue as well as the kidnapping, as well as the details of the people in his crew who were purposely sent to mall and McDonald's and high school letouts to get young women to recruit to sleep with him. R. Kelly is canceled. Yeah. He's right, a predator, Courtney, he a, he a predator man. Courtney, what you got? The fact that he, he's in jail. He's in jail for his crimes against women. I mean, and I mean, and it was a parade. And honest to goodness, here's the thing. In Chicago, about 2000, there was a reporter. There was actually there were allegations, and there was a case where I believe he was acquitted. It was thrown out. Something happened procedurally with the case, but the allegations were still factual for all intents and purposes. So he didn't get jammed up in 2000, but he certainly got jammed up a couple years ago for right for things that he's been doing over the course of 25, 30 years. 
And it was, and I think Monica said in the comments that a lot of people benefited from him. So they basically didn't rat him out. Like Correct. it was a consistent idea and in, in kind of parade of being a predator against black women, young, impressionable black women. And again, he Karan said it in the in the um a lot of people, and Adrian's from Chicago. My friends from Chicago would tell me that he would go up to the high school, he would go to the high school with his cars and try to entice young minors and everybody thought it was okay so no he is certainly canceled he cannot come back there's no redeeming him and if you i mean i i i don't even understand how you missed all of this now tp2 was a great part of my college experience but once i found out about him i was like oh you're done step in the name of love we don't step there's there's nothing going on you're not the world's greatest anything bye <laughs> like that's it hold up my question is all right can we get somebody else to like redo like step in the name of love or something like it, it, or, or we got to cancel the music too maybe we should because the other thing is too i also want you to write some homework surviving r kelly you should probably watch all of the series and all of those details i don't, I don't believe that propaganda that, that, that. <laughs> that's fine and right, well, another concern that i had too was some of those songs that we were listening to uh -oh. and the lyrics when you discussed and thought about as a young girl, even if you were listening to it in high school for whatever reason, really, really was his outcry to his sexual prowess. No. So once again, no, once again, not that I don't, I intentionally did not watch surviving R Kelly. Um, what what to me did kind of convict R. Kelly was his interview with uh Gail because like <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever he did, he did that shit. I was saying, like clearly, like I can't front, I can't front. But 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 by, by that token, I'm not gonna buy any new R. Kelly music, but the stuff I already got, I got well, hold on though, hold on though. And, and tying us back to our thing, right? He didn't give us seven principles, but he did give us 12 play, right? So the question really, the question really wasn't about. All right, Kelly, it was about like when people have this now, I guess I guess some transgressions are just worse than others. But I mean, the brother that created Kwanzaa was torturing a black woman. You know what I'm saying? So but 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 he gave so seven, he gave, he gave seven listen, principles. But I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. Him. I've been I had like him for, for decades. I hadn't liked him. I'm going to say if it's true, if somebody was trying to poison me, she might got to get her ass whipped. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> now, all right, all right. And so now, and now, now, and I see that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's reset. I don't know. Let's, let's, let's reset the room. Let's let's come it down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to make one point. Am I wrong? All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Everybody, everybody take a breath. Everybody take a breath. Everybody take a breath. All right, all right. Listen, y'all, y'all watching the Black Wealth Project. This is the show that we talk about Black Wealth issues, Black politics, Black health. Black pro, uh, black pedophiles as well, especially. Right. <laughs> right. All right, the show comes on every Sunday at seven p.m. Do me a favor, share this with somebody who's interested in the elevation of black people through wealth and money. And I'm all about canceling. I'm all Jimmy about canceling. I was saying I'm all about canceling R. Kelly. I, it doesn't bother me. Like you know, I'm an R and B head, and there's so much amazing R and B throughout history that I'm okay with that. But I also I'm curious about like how does this work in terms of like like you are not alone by Michael Jackson. R. Kelly wrote that, right? Um and I see that um Elizabeth says no samples, no nothing. He wrote so much music. Yeah. Like do we can't just can't go him or do we like, like you know we have to go through the line of notes? Two thousand. Yeah, Wait, pretty much. No, I'm yeah. Uncle Charlie, Uncle Charlie though. Oh, no, hold on. Yo, 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 we can't listen. Nobody can hear this because we're all talking at the same time. So one person at a time. Finish out, Jimmy. Then we go into Corey. Then we go into Malik. Oh right, yeah. So that's what, what I was saying is, but this this is what I mean about someone's work versus um you know who they are because I agree with you guys. Like he's a predator. Like it's it's so many examples. Like what's what's the brother uh from BET was um interviewing him. He asked him, did he like teenagers? And he was like. How old you talking? Oh. Like, 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 there's so many instances where he's just foul. He's a foul dude, right? But it's not really a, the question I'm asking um, you guys as well as our audience. It's not about him. It's just a great example to use him. But even someone like Dr. Cosby. Dr. Cosby, if you look at, like, you know, um, the Cosby show in a different world, and I, I even have personal experiences where he helped me personally. How do you balance that? How do you balance their work? versus who they are as a person because i mean he got accused of and, and convicted of some egregious things as well no that's facts and i mean that's why the show is called mm -hmm. should we celebrate kwanzaa and other curious things like there's a lot of other curious 
things, air quotes, that are out there. But go ahead, Corey. I know you got something on this. Dude was a predator, man. I, I, I like, I, ain't nothing else to talk about. Like, anytime you prey on young girls, man, like you're a predator. I, none of the other factors around what happened matter. He's a predator. So let's just get him out the conversation. I don't even want to talk about dude no more. Like, just his his essence and his aura make me mad. Like, he he's a full out predator. I don't like like. I think them dudes should burn, and I don't. And I don't I think. Hell, I don't think hell. I don't think hell is a good enough place to burn. I think they should I burn. Agree. Them too. I, I agree, hundred percent. I agree, hundred percent. All right, Malik. It is now. It's now your turn now, Malik. David. No, Ruffin, so so I, I will say this, right? Um, as I rent my houses, I I discriminate against two people. I discriminate against arsonists. Probably shouldn't say this out loud, brother. No, no, it's true. I discriminate against arsonists. I can, they are not protected. And pedophiles are not protected. They are not protected classes. I discriminate against them. I do not rent to sexual deviants knowingly, right? I do not rent to arsonists. If you are a second time violent offender, you need somewhere to live, I will hire you. If you're in the streets, whatever, I, mean, I, will, I will hire you and I will house you. But if you are an arsonist, you are a sexual predator, I will not, right? That's who I discriminated against, right, for, for my housing, you know? And so I will say this. Once again, no, I, I really didn't pay. I heard the rumors of R. Kelly. I know the, the little girl. You listen, that's terrible. I don't support R. Kelly. I don't support anything. You know, my thing was just about um, the, the music. I was, I was, I was like, I'm mostly joking, though. But the music I do enjoy, I probably will still listen to it, right? You know, especially on a road trip, you know? But I do understand you know, how people would hate him and hate him forever. And But I did have a question about the other, uh, other than the other one, other than the first young girl who was clearly underage, I don't know if there were any more incidents that he was, that he was caught. And I don't know. Do we need any more Aaliyah? Let, you keep calling her the other girl. She's Aaliyah. Okay. No, no, no. Okay, listen, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about Aaliyah, right? And there's Johnny Cash, right? There's, uh, there's, All right. there's, uh, Aaliyah, I'll stop you right there's, there. there. Yeah. There's what we we're not doing that. We're not gonna justify, we're not gonna sit here and justify white people's trash with black people's trash. No, no, I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that. You said he let's talk about what he did was wrong. What he did was wrong. The point is you saying he buried there's no justifying. I'm not justifying it. So why I'm not saying I'm just saying you saying that's him, but I'm all right, so I think the internet guys and the clone cell pro coming in sounds bleak because he is definitely on one today. But listen, moving right along, let's get back into these comments. I want to look at what uh Florice just said. She said in other news, Congress has passed the 900 may 900 billion dollar COVID funding. Now, did they pay? Did they vote on that, Florice? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I saw, it's yeah, it's yeah, it's passed. It's passed. It's passed. It's All right, passed. so it just, it just has to go to the government, to the president now to uh sign it. To the, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so I know there's the six hundred dollar um, stimulus payment for uh, adults and children. So if you have a, a like a, a household of four, you could qualify to get up to like twenty four hundred dollars. So, but I know I don't think they have funding for the government, local and state. But back to the regularly uh, scheduled programming. Uh, Let me conclude that. Oh, hey, real quick. I'm oh, sorry. I apologize. I just want to say this: Do we get rid of the entire Def Jam? Um, the, the the entire label. Do we get rid of Crush Groove? Do we get rid of everything that Russell Simmons ever well, that, ever touched? That was kind of my no, no, question. No, 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 no. All right, no, 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 let, no, no, no. Let's move on, y'all, because we want to stay on this, and it's becoming circular at this point. Um, because we got here again. You know, do we cancel Bill Cosby and Michael Jackson? Um, Monica says, I think the question is, do we think people are better than or more than the worst thing they they've ever done? Can the good outweigh the questionable? I mean, I think patterns matter because they show trends. I do. And I think that it is okay to give grace and people do do things that are wrong and people are human and all those things. But when you start crossing into moral boundaries, violating people's civil rights and doing things that are super questionable to your integrity and your character, that's when it really should become a question. And I'm also very big on um, 
family checking family before it becomes a conversation about, you know, the world digging, digging into your finances, digging into what you can create for yourself and your wealth for your family. We have the opportunity also too to check our brothers and sisters, to be able to sit them down or pull them back or kind of be in a space of, you know what, maybe you shouldn't be the one that headlines the BET show this year. You got a lot of heat on you right now with different things that are happening and we don't want to promote it. That's okay. Too. Sadly, BET ain't ours though. But I, mean, I got I, you, point, Tracy. You're right. You're right. I don't disagree. <laughs> All right, so Sanchez says it's tough to separate the person from the work. All right, so again, the question of tonight is should we celebrate Kwanzaa, right? Let's reset everything. Should we celebrate Kwanzaa and all the other curious things that go around Kwanzaa? All right, so Don Johnson says it should we always side with the justice system, facts, and says after all the system has, has done to our community. So wait, wait, wait. So time out. I want to reset because it actually wasn't Kwanzaa and all the things around Kwanzaa. It was just curious things in general. It was kind of like all the other things that are curious, not just Kwanzaa, but because of tis the season, that was the conversation. So I want to just clarify that. No, thank you for that, Courtney. Mm -hmm. All right. So, all right. Elizabeth says, I get it. I'm here for restorative justice. However, I tend to look at full... mm, I'm messing this up, y'all. I tend to look at your full contribution to the culture. The Cosby Show and a different world shifted the culture in a major way. But music is a little different. As Tracy said, he really laid his predatory behavior throughout his music. You can't separate his art from his sense. Right. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Same. His sense was his art. All right. Karan says, what someone has poured into the culture like a Cosby for influencing generations to go to HBCU. R. Kelly did what gave us sex music. No comparison. Yeah. We we forgetting about the cartoons. We yep. forget we forgetting about Fat Albert. Fat yep. Albert was the precursor True. to yep. all of yep. that. Facts. Like, Bill Cosby got a, a a longer. No, I'm I'm not even getting to. Yeah, Bill Cosby was he he did something different. He said a lot of kids at college. Yeah, he did a lot. We I don't think we're not comparing the two. We're not comparing the two. I'm not comparing them to at all. I'm just saying, but he if, if, if he did man. what they say he did, <laughs> if he did what they say he did, that's egregious. Like he was a predator to black women. Like if they, yeah. if he did what they say he did, right? So, I, I, the the question wasn't about either one of these gentlemen specifically. Like you know, um, we can go into a, a number of folks. I mean, nobody's perfect, but the question is, how do you balance that? How do you balance that work specifically as a culture when we know that a system is against us anyway, right? So, so when it comes to our folks, we already know that's why a lot of times you'll get people that will fight fight back for those specific people because they know the systems against them. They know how we get treated. I agree. All right, the white says he's late to the show, but he's here. All right, welcome to that. Welcome, the white. Thanks for joining us. Welcome, welcome. All right, so for for he said people can be sick. Does that mean their work is not good? Maybe we take the money they make and use it for a cause, but their work is amazing. I don't. I don't know. I. I, I don't now, know. That's like that's like drug dealers giving turkeys away on Thanksgiving. Yeah. I mean, I, listen. I have way less of a problem with that, right? Because drug dealers <laughs> give money. I mean, listen. Because the, the other person on the other side of drug dealing is a volunteer, so I have way less problem with that than somebody violating somebody else and taking taking something from them. Uh, that's kind of less. That's the you call them yeah. a volunteer. Some people are sick, man, and they're taking advantage. They're taking advantage of their own people, man. Thank you. Oh, listen, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, and I agree with that. But don't, no, no, I'm, I'm gonna mind my business. Go ahead. So, no, so yeah, no, <laughs> I, you I, up here? no, I think it's important that we do talk about like people can be sick, yes. But I think here's the problem with it is that R. Kelly's music was a direct reflection of his. Children. And we have to keep that in mind is that he called somebody yeah. said a comment, he called himself the Pied Piper of RB. Like he was luring children with his music. Like that's a real egregious thing. Like your sickness is weave woven throughout your work that you cannot separate yeah. the two. And that's where we are. 
and and that's how I feel about him. And I mean, a lot of people collectively feel that way. That doesn't mean that my feelings are are, are their feelings are any more credible because it's it's a mask, but it's a problem. And yeah. it's something that we actually in the community have a problem with sexual predators. And I mean, even Oprah Winfrey talks about it in terms of her experience is that she actually did say, "Hey, I'm being inappropriately touched," and her family didn't believe her. So I right. think again, but that's Oprah's story is an example of a larger problem that we have in the community. So again, I, I mean, it, you know, R. Kelly, you, you got to burn at the stake, player. I don't, mm, I don't know. That's too bad, he, so sad. He's probably a bad example because it's, he is oh. so egregious, and everybody like we none of us say really been with our, He's a bad example. I think Cosby probably a better example of what the question yeah. is, um, mm -hmm. as opposed because R. Kelly is like so far to the other right. side. But yeah. I think how about, how about R. Pastor, Kelly for the how about, how about Pastor Touch them all? <laughs> Are we we going to talk about them? Cool. We're going to talk about Pastor Touch them all. All the, all the pastors out here touching all these folks out here, all these sex crimes. Oh, you talking about the priests? Um, yeah, I'm talking about all of them. Like, not, they not all together, lumped together, but you know. But the ones like, who are guilty. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the you know, if we Are we going to go there? Are we really going to go there? About sexual deviance and how, the, you know, are we going to go into those celebrations and how how we use that kind of, you know, how people in power use their power with sexual deviation? Are we really going to go there? Like, and, and, and all of the, so all of their work gets thrown out too? So does the pastor get thrown out or does the, you know, whoever does whatever, does all of that work get thrown out? Because so think, those people do good work too. I think one of my concerns is I have, I have been taught that there can be honor amongst thieves. Mm. And I feel like even in jail, there is a hierarchy on crimes. And there are certain crimes that are so egregious that even amongst inmates, they are unforgivable. And I feel like typically in our community, it wouldn't be a bad idea to adopt a sliding scale level of purity for some of our leaders who create a body of work that is helpful to our community and whether or not they are people that bring so much value that the things that we can kind of add, compensate, whatever for. But something some things are too heavy. Okay, hold on. Let's take a break for a minute, y'all. Let's reset. Let's honor. Let's honor Malik's uh, progeny here. Hey. <laughs> Young King. He 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 supposed to be up here, man. I don't know, I don't know where's my man. I don't know how he can get up here. He what's the name? Malik, Malik, what's the name? This, this, this is this is this is Miles Gray. Miles Gray. Wow. Hey, hey, Miles. Miles. How are hey, you? Miles. What's up, Miles? <laughs> See, they say hi to you, Miles. See, look, they say hi right there. Say hi. Hey, Mom. <laughs> I mean, I think it's always important for us to take a moment and always honor and salute the kids, um, yeah. the children, rather. You know, I think that's important. I don't want to sound corny, but they really are the future. And I don't know if our community really looks at that in the right context a lot of times. And kind of bringing it back to Kwanzaa, right? A lot of times people complain about Kwanzaa um, with the founder. But when you look at the principles that we talked about earlier, a lot of them can really teach and, and structure real culture for us to kind of abide by and live by and conduct ourselves with going forward to really elevate our overall black wealth standards. So I'll ask this question to the panel and anybody else in the audience that wants to ask, how important is culture when it comes to building wealth? Shout out to Miles for coming and grabbing the, uh, the clubhouse phone. He's trying to get right on clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think culture is the foundation of wealth. I think if you don't have a cultural foundation, then everybody is just an individual. So I think wealth is a team sport. So individuals that get wealthy get crushed. I, I'll, I'll give you a, a, an example. Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods cheated on his wife and, and damn near lost his life. Facts. And, and so because he didn't have the weight of a community behind him. And so what I'm saying is you, 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 the foundational piece for wealth building is culture. You have to have a standard, a cultural standard for, and then you have to have people willing to address 
and, and, and uphold that standard so that you can get the backing of the community. And with culture comes, you have to, you know, we have we have a code, right? And so people have to stay on code. And so when, when you know when one black person says to another black person, stay on code, other black other black people who don't want to follow the code always act like they don't know what the code is. And that's tomfoolery, and they know it's they it's BS. And so what we got to do is get you know we got to get rid of those uh, BS folks that don't that, that act like they don't know what the code is. Some people really truly don't know because they grew up around um, pink toes, and so they don't really know what the, the the culture really entails. But if you if you if you didn't grow up around that, if you grew up around black people, you know what culturally how we get down. And so, don't tell me you don't know, like that. That that's 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 an ang- that that's a that's a flashpoint for me. Gotcha. Well, wealth is a team sport. T-shirt alert. T-shirt alert. T-shirt alert. <laughs> All right. yeah. No, I would say that absolutely it is. And come on, you brought up a point earlier. You said that we don't talk about um, culture as it pertains to wealth. And what I was saying is we do, but only when we point at other cultures. When we say. Look how the Asian community operates. So, you know, look how the Jewish community operates. So we talk about their culture and how they use their culture, but we never focus on our own. Um, I shouldn't say we never, because some of us actually do. Um, but I think more of us need to. Let's put it that way. And as this pertains to our overall conversation, all of that is about culture. All the principles are about culture. And if we practice more of that, to your point, on a daily basis, it would help us in creating wealth, in creating wealth a number of ways, because like Corey said, it's a team sport. There's no big institution that I know of in anything, in education, um, in law and banking, any part of our society that was built by one person alone. Wealth truly is a team sport. So in, in culture helps bring us together as that team that we need to operate. So I absolutely believe that culture is a part of black wealth. Now, Jimmy, I, I want to not push back, but just mm-hmm. add a little commentary, right? Because sometimes I will talk about some of the things that I feel we should add to our culture that might be from the Jewish culture, right? I.e., mm-hmm. let's look at bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs. A lot mm-hmm. of times they're giving cash to these kids when they turn 13. Well, how can we do something similar to create college funds, business funds? Have a black mitzvah funds. like they did on a, on Blackish. They had a black mitzvah. Right. Well, so, you know, have, we have those. They're they're called intelligence. We have exactly. them. Exactly. Like, what, what do you mean? Like but, like, but hold on, hold on. Some people feel the cotillions and all those coming outs are a very elitist thing. And I ain't, I'm not pointing no fingers or saying anything, but I've never been to a cotillion. I, I, yeah, I don't even know what that is. Right. So a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times, Jack and Joe associations will do cotillions and coming out um, uh, formals and things like that. But that's kind of only for one section of black culture or black society for the most part it's not i mean anybody can join and do it like i don't understand like that's and it's that's it i mean anybody in the community we actually ask people in the in high schools to join so we solicit public high schools. so no it's not just which which communities though because I, 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 which communities do do they ask i'm I'm in i'm in north philly man i never heard of a cotillion until like 10 years ago like, I don't even know what that was. So hold on real quick. Audience, do y'all know what a cotillion is? Have y'all been to a cotillion? Have you ever heard of a cotillion before? Please, please put your comments in the, in the comments or the, your responses in the comments. So go oh, ahead, what about, what about a male rite of passage ceremony? They so for, I, yeah, I mean, I know what rites of passage is. Okay. I, but the, the, when you said cotillion, that was like you were speaking Korean. Like, I don't, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not being funny. No, like, I understand. I understand what you're saying, but I think that that's another thing too. Like, where I'm from, if you say cotillion, and I'm like, what, 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 what language is that? Like, give me, give it to me in plain. Because here's the thing: as a community, we're fractured too. There, there's certain folks in our Correct. community that live a whole different life than other folks, right? Correct. And 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 you know, let's be honest. That that's what goes on. There's so I don't think everyone would know what a cotillion is. I don't think that they didn't go to certain schools and ask about joining and, and, and things of that nature. Like, I don't know if, um, you know, I mean, I don't know if Jack and Jill goes to specific neighborhoods that I'm thinking of, but I've never been to a cotillion. I know what a cotillion is, honestly, from TV. 
so I wasn't talking specifically about Jack and Jill. I'm saying that when I was in high school, when I was at Girls High, there were a lot of different opportunities in terms of rights of pastures and cotillions that were offered to us as a school. Like beyond that, I, I can't say for anything else. Okay. Yeah, I mean, but let's let's talk about like all right, so you know that's 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 our privilege too, right? So Corey and I are central guys, you girls high. That's not and I'm not gonna name any other schools, but that's not going to other schools. Let's put it that way. Um, and that's what I mean by us being fractured even as a as a people, right? And and you have to get into Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill turns out a lot of like a lot of folks. I know someone told me they got turned out of Jack and Jill because they said, like, you know, what do your parents do for a living? And you're so you're knocking off certain like parts of our community right there. Well, we we what we'll have an opportunity to um to talk to the kids about that in the next couple of weeks. Oh yeah, we we, 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 we invited the people. Yeah, that's that's funny, right? So we're going to speak at a Jack and Jill event, although not in person no more. But um, so for, yeah, for Malik, Malik, Corey, and I are speaking to for right, Jack well, and Jill. I'm well, sorry. For the record, that? Jack and Jill is the only black organization that does cotillions. That's oh, just right. the one. That's just the first one that came to mind. So I don't want to. I don't want to make it tell you. And, and, and I'm not pooping. So I'm just saying. No, no, no. Well, I just, hold on, Corey. I just want to clarify. You know, just for the record, I'm not saying okay. Jack and Jill. It's the only organization that does cotillions. That again, that was just the first one that came to mind. So go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm just saying my neighborhood high school was grass. Go if you ask anybody that went to my neighborhood high school with a cotillion, is they would have asked you what what language is that, and can you put it in plain language for me? And my neighborhood school was Germantown. I'm just going to say that nobody in Germantown had a cotillion. Oh, see, I Don said it for me. Dog. Said, nobody in King or Germantown had a cotillion. No, nah, not at all. I doubt okay. it. So again, these were other organizations and relationships with families of other organizations. Because I know growing up, I never really heard of Cotillion growing up, but I did know about Calendar Girl. And I did know about Miss Peanut. Correct. I did hear about all these other organizations who celebrated. I don't know. You're rich. Y'all rich. Cut it off. <laughs> Listen, Tracy dad, Tracy dad don't go to work when it rains. She's been rich like Greg Parker, man. Cut it off. Listen, she got she got that not she got that wing on the work when it rain money. Like that's hold hold it for you for not having to get it out the mud because my kids never gonna know what the mud looks like. Yeah. But I'm just saying. Trust, trust my kid this year. <laughs> right? right. But we, and even though we joke about this and we talk about this, all of us who are in a space where we are amassing wealth and creating wealth and everything else from the muscle and from the mud, beautiful thing, definitely needed for your generation and for your bloodline. But the next step in the next generation is where I'm coming from, where I'm speaking to a space of we have communities where we're in African-American and, and, and communities of color, where we are celebrating our young children, our young boys and girls, as they grow into the next phase of their life, whether it's rites of passage, cotillions, calendar girl, all these things, because we want to make sure that they understand their worth in this crazy big world and understand that they do come from something to instill it into them as they grow into the next phase of their lives. So although... Everybody does not have exposure to these things, which I completely understand. And I get that I'm coming from a place of innocence, privilege. The conversation still needs to be, maybe somebody needs to hear that these places exist. See, yeah. Nobody's disagreeing with that. I'm just saying like, from, you know, from experience, you know what I mean? Like it's, that's, a, it's, it's foreign. It's it's foreign to, to, to the All right, so hold on, y'all. Let's let's check back in with the folks. Let's let's get into these comments a little bit, y'all. Monica says Kwanzaa is an idea that should be bigger than the founder. The seven principles are meant to build unity and economic strength within our community. I don't don't know what he did or didn't do, but the idea of the holiday should be able to be separated from the person. We're not celebrating him. We're talking the principles and using them to empower us as a community. I almost want to read that twice. Thank you, Monica. That was a great comment. Oh, how about this? I didn't even know the boy name for like five years. I was, you know, going to the celebrations. And so <laughs> and still, for real, I had to do some research because I was a teacher. And, you right. know, over the holidays, I would go to the library to the celebrations with the kids. And then right. I, I had no idea who boy was. And then when I start doing the Googles, 
I was like, oh man, boy, kind of, you know, kind of foul. And then, <laughs> I mean, no, you know, but I got you. But the celebration was still like, I, it never took away anything from the celebrations. And that's the point that I was making. The celebrations were vibrant and the people were happy. And they were, and, you know, I have actually celebrated all seven days of Kwanzaa, not on purpose, but because of my job. And so I, I, I got to see all of that in action. And so I agree that people should be celebrating the principles and not worried about where that came from because that is greater than the man. Okay, so Adrian says, I haven't seen continuous in years and I missed them. The churches in Chicago had them decades ago and they weren't done by wealthy people. Okay. Maybe in 2022, we'll sponsor a joint for the uh, 16 year olds. So, I'm here. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. So Don, so Don Johnson says never been the one. All right, uh, Melanie Down. What's up, Alvin? Thanks for joining us. You too. Where, where you been, man? You ain't been here in a few weeks. <laughs> Yo, check, you gotta check in. Yeah, Alvin. We, we, no, we, Alvin, checks we, in. We, Alvin checks in almost every yeah. day and Saturday with me. So I've seen him. I don't know. I don't know. I think he was here last week, but I don't know. But all right, Alvin says of coming of age rituals for our youth, which is tradition in African cultures anywhere. I, I agree with those. Marsha says yes to the party. <laughs> a party for the suburban kids. <laughs> All right, so Alvin said he didn't know what that was. All right, so all right, Flurry says I disagree. My family was screened for Jack and Jill. I did not know what they were what they were at that time. I don't think we passed. Okay. <laughs> I know a lot of people like that, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like all of our, like all of our organizations, they all kind of have complicated. They should, they should have a screening process, though. So I'm not mad at that. So, right. Karan, Karan says he was hired by Jack and Joe to photograph one of those joints. How was it, Karan? What did you think about it? All right, Jose says yes, heard of them. There are several programs like Jack and Joe that has just started letting in common folks. Mm. All right, so uh, Monica says I heard a continuance from TV. I learned about Jack and Jill when I was when I toured Spelman. I always felt like Jack and Jill were only open to elite families. I know a lot of people feel that way. I mean, that's I mean, never mind. Go ahead. All right. So Adrian says, so is there classism in a black community? Yeah, there is classism. <laughs> yeah. <in a black. laughs> yes. But I, I'll say this. I don't know that just the mere fact of having a cotillion equals classism or elitism. No, I mean, that's not what we're saying though. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I like Monica's comeback because that's exactly the point. It's in yeah. the human community. It's not just. I mean, yes, that is that is facts. That Class, is fact. Classism is the reason for racism. Correct. <laughs> All right. So I never heard of any of these programs. <laughs> uh, can you provide a list of programs? No, I can't provide a no. list of programs. But can somebody Google a list of programs? Hold up. And put it in the Blackwell Project Group again. You, you, missed, you missed a comment from Jose. There's a couple comments above, and I think that's it's an interesting comment. That right there. Because okay, those other the other benefit of those groups was to create dating. That is true. To create dating pools for our children with other children of the same. Nothing wrong with that. I don't see anything wrong with that. And, I, 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 with that. No. and I want to piggyback on that too because. That was another portion of the conversation that we discussed before about generational wealth. One of the ways to be able to create and maintain it is to is through marriage, being able to marry. Marriage. Like marriage. That, that was the original intent of marriage. That's right. Pass wealth on. That's it. That was the original intent. Marriage for love is a relatively new concept. Correct. So <laughs> doing it to maintain wealth in your personal families to make sure that it's transferred and it's protected and it's still, it's not diluted mm -hmm. is something fairly new for the black community. And that's also like, remember there was a dowry, like the wife actually family oh, right. gave something to the husband's family as kind of a, a, as payment. So again, to Tracy's point, and I think Again, when you don't know your history and you don't have that context, we don't have we think that somebody's being exclusionary when it's not. It was more cultural than it was exclusionary. Um, and I think that's something that we all need to be to keep in mind. And then there's a book called uh, People Like Us. Is that what it's called, Jimmy? Yes, it is. Or yeah, it is. It is. Re read that book. Read that book. I think that's a great book to read. No, it is. It is. And again, I wasn't coming at it from a, a place like, listen, I was just pointing out the fact that in our community, it is fractured. Like, we all don't move the same way. But I guess it's like that in every community. Um, it, it is. 
and, and and you know it's funny speaking of books, right? We talk about how culture pertains to wealth. Um, St- Steven Silberger was the guy's name, the Jewish phenomenon. That book is all about culture, right? The, the, the cover of the book, you think you're going to read about like you know um how Jewish people invest or whatever, but the whole book is about culture. It's called the Jewish phenomenon, and how because of their culture, they're raised a certain way and taught a certain way, and and you know they're not ashamed of talking about wealth within their culture. So I absolutely get it. Um. And the people like us, I've read that as well. Another powerful book. Um, you know, I, but I was just pointing out the fact that I would love for us to read Disintegration. You know, Has anybody read that? Okay. No, I have. I would like to answer the question about culture and, and wealth creation when we ever get okay, back. Okay, go ahead. Well, we are. We are. I just wanted to kind of throw this in there because I think this this is a good thing that we don't talk about. And this is something we have to think about as well. So th- this integration is by Eugene Robinson. He's a black journalist, uh, uh, political pundit, but he wrote, he wrote a book talking about how there is no real black America because they're all broken into different layers and context. Mm. And I think that's something we definitely have to look at and explore it sometimes too, mm. but go ahead, Courtney, I apologize. So no. So what I was saying in terms of culture is that one of our cultural problems is that we don't talk about money. We don't talk about wealth. And one of the places that you see a problem with that is when we are transferring the biggest wealth transfer that a family will engage in is when someone passes away. And what happens is is when there's not a conversation about wealth vis-a-vis death, that is where we start having major problems. And we talked about it a couple of times when we talk about properties that are engaged in a tangled title, properties that get sold at sheriff's sale because the family can't agree on the disposition of property, the fact that people don't even know these properties exist because they held it in a, a fictional name, whoever knows, but it happens a lot that we do not have the conversation. And we don't have the conversation and you don't have a will, or you don't have any indication of exactly what exists, then we have a lot of problems. And, and that's basically what I deal with when I deal with estate planning clients. You know, I, de- I actually spend a lot of time in the discovery section about coming up with an estate plan. And we do it a couple of different times because sometimes culturally I'll get two different versions of the story or I'll get more information on the second time when I say, okay, one plus one equals two and that's not it. Could you explain that a little bit more? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, da, 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 da. And I'm like, well, that's a really important piece of information that you should have told me last time I spoke to you. So again, it's, it's about we have a culture of, um, I would say, misinformation and secrets that really hurts our wealth, uh, our wealth transfers. Facts. Great point. Great point. All facts. All right. So, uh, all right, so Karan, all right, hold on. Karan asked or said, now, Tracy, how do you give this type of experience and worth to children in the hood who feel they don't have worth? Okay. So I'm going to add this in and I kind of touched on it earlier. These organizations are available locally in most of folks' communities. You probably just need to use Google. And there are a lot of different options that you can join. I know Calendar Girl, for uh, a lot of young women prior to the age of, I believe, they go up to, or at one point they were going up to the age of 15, is available to any high school, middle school graduate it literally is posted on the internet about these scholarship opportunities with the gala, which I don't know will continue post 2020, but those things are available. These opportunities, you can find them in your community, but you have to seek them out. And sometimes it might take a mentor or a big brother or a big sister or an auntie or someone that makes that sees something in a young man or a young woman to say, you know what? I want to pour into you. I want to give more to you because that's really the entire purpose of those kind of organizations. But it takes one person to get started. Facts. Facts. Uh, All right. What else we got in these chats? Uh, Elizabeth says, let me go to this one real quick. Uh, No offense, but the man was a little elite. Shots the whole time we was over here talking. <laughs> Elizabeth says, with all these options on Instagram, I don't see this coming back. What options on Instagram? You talking about the dating pool? Man, listen. <laughs> That's another show, Liz. That's yeah, another show. yeah. All right. I think, yeah, we got that one already. All right. Groom's family paid a dowry to show that they can support the family unit he desired to create. 
the price could be anywhere from one thousand to a hundred thousand. It also could be a cow or some chickens too, y'all. But the dowries for women. I forgot what the groom's uh portion was, but a dowry is actually for women. So I want us to get the term. I don't actually remember the other side of it. Like, but there was an exchange of of financial means, whether it was in currency or if it was a function like a cow or something like that. And again, I think it's really important that marriage that really reiterates the point that we've talked about a couple of times that marriage is a business. It is a really is a business and it's been treated as a business for centuries until somebody decided to flip and remix it. And now we're marrying for love. And then the game changes and things flipped. And then sometimes we're wondering how we got here um, because you changed the rules of marriage. Okay. So Courtney, I, I dug up a uh, dowry real quick. Let's take a look at that. So we could all be on one accord. Uh, let's pull it up. Let's pull it up. Give me one second, folks. What is a dowry? This is all rich stuff right here. Let me expand it. All right, so learn about the history of dowry and meaning and tradition. It says a dowry is an ancient tradition found across cultures, religions. All right, and so it says a dowry is a gift or substantial monetary value given from either the bride or the groom to their future spouse upon marriage. So I guess it depends on which culture it is. Um, it could be man or woman who gives it or bride or girl. Yeah, I don't agree with that definition. I come up with some <laughs> yeah, I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> Alternative facts. We not so, doing yeah, I don't think that that's not right it now. because here's the thing. I mean, and we talked about this in law school, but I don't remember the other one for men, but Dowie was specifically for women. And unfortunately, I'm you know on my phone, so I can't look so, it up. <laughs> okay, okay. So as it stands right now, okay, they said in Roman times, dowry to the groom. Or his family to offset the cost of living. Mm -hmm. All right, so find find something else. But right now, dowry is unisex, Courtney. No, it's not. I mean, I'm just telling you that's cool. Okay, well, right? But look it up. I mean, you, to, you didn't even go to Merriam Webster. You went to like some random ass blog. Like, no, I didn't. I went to brides.com. Yeah, right. 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 Brides.com, Kamari. Brides.com. Yeah. Like are you real? talking right. about are you talking yeah. about bride price? I saw I see bride price on a All right, so here no, the first one that came up was uh what what is this oxford the oxford dictionary mm -hmm. so let's let's go there courtney if, th okay. if that'll make you happy i'm trying to figure out to pull it up on the screen in a big fashion mm -hmm. ah, i see just see, read it wants to boss me around but nobody ever does this stuff like right? they don't realize how hard it is and then everybody gets impatient <laughs> well small violin Mom's violin, like yeah, she said, that's alternative facts. Like, what? All right, is, is Wikipedia good enough? That came up. No, pretty quick. Wikipedia is garbage. Are you? Are you? No, are you? Crazy. Man, there's people writing well, PhD I, papers on well, Wikipedia. I'm seeing, I'm seeing the legal definition of it: the dos perfecticia and then the dos aventitia. The what? The dowry. One is one is for men, one is for women. Those right, there's a difference people. between the one for men and the difference between women. Dowry was referred to women. And that's what I'm just trying to say. I don't remember what the other name was because it wasn't something that actually happened. It was because, remember, when you took on a wife at some point in history, it was considered oh, to be a bill. Britannica.com, good enough. I don't know, Kamari. Like, whatever. Like, I don't care at this point. My point is that when oh, you took you on a wife, a right. wife you is gonna property. Be, you're going to be right finish. no matter what. Is Let that what you're finish. telling me? <laughs> Just let me finish and get to the point because I, I'm, I think this is something that a lot of people miss. A wife was considered to be a bill. A wife was considered also to be property. property. So again, they're saying, hey, you're taking on this thing that I'm trying to get rid of. Like, and there's other cultures, I believe, Damn. and I don't know when this was happening, but they yep. were like, if you had a, a firstborn, like, daughter instead of a, a boy, like, you're, you were considered to be cursed. Like as a family, so there's a lot of things that were going on about this whole idea of dowry and and actually giving you something as an addition to this thing, this obligation that they were giving. And that's why I want to be very clear. And then also that actually has been translated to some of the estate, the intestate rules, especially in Delaware. So there's a lot to this. So it's not just this thing that sits by itself. So I'm just reporting the facts that I'm pulling up on the Internet. Like I told Courtney the other day, Google isn't always right, right? Mm -hmm. So this here says dowry, the money, goods, or estate that a woman brings to her husband or his family in marriage. Most common in cultures that are strongly patrilineal and that expect women to reside with or near the husband's family. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that was my point. That's what I said. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's not what you said, Courtney. Yes, I said specifically a dowry is related to the woman. It's something else when it's related. Who, who to gives me. the money? Who, who gives the money? The, the woman. woman. Something else. It call. It's called something else when the man has to give it to the woman. It's not, right. it's so, not a dowry. Correct. Yo. Um, for like the fourth time. So, all First right. of all. You know what? Lawan says, "How is how is Wikipedia not credible?" Yo, we can all go right now and write on somebody with Wikipedia Correct. and take and take the information and then until, until, until yeah, until it change. You, anybody can write, right. it, you know. As so, Elizabeth, Elizabeth says, "Do we have to separate love and the business of marriage?" We know many businesses, business marriages, and also have switched the toxicity of mar of marriage for stability, and that is the need for a love and evolution after watching failed businesses. So I don't think you have to separate the two, but what I was saying is, is that we have that we've moved from one side of the pendulum to the other side of the pendulum. Swung all the is way. That, you know, you went from marrying for a business purpose and for the wealth for continuing your wealth to now marrying for love. And I think there has to be a meaning in the middle. Is that right. you're saying, Hey, I love you, I can build with you. Hey, I this bring something to the table. Or we can have a business or something. There has to be somewhere in the middle that we kind of join like Voltron or forces or whatever. And I think, unfortunately, we're getting to the point where we're starting to now see the problems with because if, and I would I will give you guys an example. I've had a lot of conversations with people who don't have the same idea or the same thought process about money. And that's what causes problems in their marriage is that they're not having the same ideas about money and how money works. And then you have big problems because one of the major problems in marriage is finances. And so all right, I want to, mm -hmm. let's go to Elizabeth's comment. All right. So she said, I'm being very sarcastic, but full thing, there is more available elsewhere instead of looking at their community. That's a big fact. Okay. Big fact. All facts. White man, ice is colder. Facts. Said by right. some, not by me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yo, um, all amazing points, man. You shouldn't be marrying somebody you can't build with. Mm -hmm. Correct. I, I would agree. I mean, and I you have to like them. Come can on. We talk about like and love, though, because I can love somebody and not like them. And I that think is it's really always the facts. Like somebody, you gotta like them. Like you gotta wake up. Like some days, I'm not going to. Like I'm always gonna love you, but some days I'm not gonna like you. And that, and that has and and again a prolonged period of dislike brings up other issues. And I think it's really important to also like the person that you're with and i don't think that is emphasized enough yeah agree all right jimmy what did you have about what no i said what i had to say oh i thought you were coming with something else okay no all right all right, all right so i think like, there's a yeah, there's one more comment uh two more comments so karan says i mean other cultures still married for business i think look at jeff bezos or bill gates well jeff bezos actually married for love um, and then they wind up separating, and then his wife or his ex-wife is now giving all her billions to a bunch of HBCUs um, and uh, other nonprofits as well, other charitable things. Um, Adrian Anderson says that's right. We do not need to meet somewhere in the middle, especially. We do need that's, to right. Meet. that's right. We do, we do need to meet somewhere in the middle, especially if a couple is planning on raising a family. Many women want a man with a solid financial foundation, or. The ability to create or set one. Yeah, this is why I never get into those gold digger conversations because you're supposed to marry for financial stability. That's the actual point of marriage. But people always get into the 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 is, is, is a man a gold digger for wanting to be with a woman who has more than him, or is a woman a gold digger who marries a man who has financial stability? That was the whole point of marriage. The literal actual point was to move wealth from generation to generation and combine family wealth. And so at the point where I know the original intent of marriage, I would never call anybody a gold digger or anything around that because that was the whole point of it. Mm -hmm. and, and also, I just want to um, point out, because I saw um, LaJuan said, but LaJuan, you can't, I've edited Wikipedia pages trying to be a, a smart ass back in the day with athletes, but um, all you have to do is sign up for the account. The editors protect the page, so there's editors out there that will protect the page and take something down. They feel like you know you're just being flagrant, but you can just, just sign up for an account. You can go edit things and create entries on Wikipedia. So not to go off on a tangent, I have seen stats though that say that Wikipedia is about ninety eight percent correct, generally ish. They have right. amazing and, editors. Uh, they over it, time they've built amazing editors that like right. really and, and yeah, that, that, that the facts. Great. 
that the stuff on Wikipedia is actually more accurate than the stuff in most encyclopedias. I would so believe I, that. I believe that. Yeah. I would believe uh, that. They have more recent information. <laughs> right. So I right, says did he? She had a bag when he convinced her to leave her job. Well, they both worked at hedge funds. They both had money. Um, yeah. when they left, they, yeah. they drove cross country, and she helped. She literally helped him build Amazon. Yeah. She was she, definitely in the gym shooting with him. She, she was exactly, definitely in the gym. She could have got half, in my opinion, and would have been justified getting half. She didn't. Right. Take, she didn't take half though. They she didn't want it. <laughs> she didn't need it. it. Who needs that? When you get to, when you start getting those numbers, like. What yeah, but I mean, but the point is, like everybody kind of goes to half, and she clearly was entitled to have because she really helped build that organization. So, all right, uh, there there are objective benefits to marriage. I would agree. I yeah. agree. I agree with that. Right, Karan says the check. Yeah, the check was definitely warranted. She put up her life savings and left a, a pretty decent job on Wall Street. Absolutely, plus right. all the all the ups and downs that they went through in building Amazon. Yeah, it wasn't just a cake one. Uh, she was definitely in the gym shooting. She was absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. All right, folks. So listen, this is the Blackwell Project. As we begin to wind down, we appreciate everyone that is here with us every week. All right. So today's conversation is was should we celebrate Kwanzaa, right? And should we celebrate Kwanzaa and all the other curious things? So I think we have a consensus that we all feel that the need to celebrate Kwanzaa and the principles are legit. Does everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. well, I, I guess the way I, the way I would put it is not. I mean, we, we probably should celebrate. I think we should practice the principles because yeah. I think that that's something that we should do, regardless of whether we do it on the twenty sixth. I think those principles should be practiced like day in and day out. And I think you mentioned that earlier, Kamari. So we should be practicing these principles like you know all the time, and you know start to build our culture and protect our culture. All right, facts. So listen, folks, again, every every Sunday at 7 p.m., the Blackwell Project is here. Do us a favor. Come and join us in the Blackwell Project group. We have ongoing conversations there every day about black wealth. Come join the conversations with us, spark a conversation with us, and we'll keep this black wealth train moving. So, again, I appreciate everyone being here, and we will see you all next Come week. on, real quick, before, whoa, you, before you sign off. Come on, before whoa. you sign off. I like that hat you got on, too, good brother. <laughs> I mentioned that. Thank you, sir. I forgot. I forgot all about it, right? So yeah. that's it. That's cool. Tracy that's so yeah. That's so yeah. Right? So yeah. I'm practicing. I'm practicing a couple of Kwanzaa principles, right? Unity and uh, 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 collective collective economics as well. So thank you, Tracy, for doing this. I actually like this. I like this a lot. Oh, I'm glad. Thank you. you got any more ads coming out? Um, I'm sure we, my business partner and I. She she does most of the website development and different things because her background is all of that design and everything else so we just kind of talk about some other products when they pop on but there'll definitely be more sweatshirts hats different things before we go tracy what is the website for your brand um it should be I'm gonna have to pull up the instagram page which is probably the easiest um urban poetico it should be underscore <laughs> Ron, that's, what, that's what we do, Karan. We talk about everything yeah. from Mark Kelly yeah. to, to, to Kwanzaa, but to, I, Mar to, to, to dowry. I to, it, I it all goes together. But I think, but yeah, I think it was at the end of the day, it was other curious things. All the other things that we talked about were other curious things, right? I mean, I think, I think a dowry conversation can fit into the Kwanzaa, you know, idea. Yeah, I mean, if you talk about unity. I mean, what is what is the ultimate epitome of unity? Marriage. So, right. Yeah. Well, purpose. Right. Purpose, purpose of economics. Purpose. I mean, it's a purpose. lot. Yeah, yeah, purpose. Yeah. Wrong word. Put the website in the chat too, so you can have it. We'll, we'll be flagrant. We'll be flagrant. Come on, man. We focusing on our other team member, dog. <laughs> Pipe down. It's wrong one. Huh? It's the wrong screen, come on. You got the wrong screen up, bro. You got you got Malik on uh on the stage right now, man. Oh. You got to hold on. You got to reset the room. Wait, listen, listen. Right, he hungry. I'm sure you're hungry. You gotta, listen, hungry. you got a PTR. I, reset extremely, the room, man. I am extremely hungry. And if y'all don't know what Jimmy's talking about, y'all got to get on Clubhouse. <laughs> hey, hey, cool. I'm using my Clubhouse lingo, man. Yeah. Hey, we, we 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 should we should trademark that. Trademark what? Reset the room. <laughs> Reset the room. Reset the room. Reset the room.com. I mean, I, I got $3 on it. 
All right. So listen, I wanted to definitely highlight Tracy. Um, definitely wanted to look at her website. Listen, y'all, the highlight is here. Kwan's is here. Y'all just updated the website, didn't you? This is this is like recent. Yeah, yeah you did. Because I, I I went and shopped on this website and it didn't look Same like here. It ain't, it ain't look like this. This something you y- y'all went. Uh, oh, y'all y'all got a bad things happen in Philadelphia shirt. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, they updated. I, I didn't yeah. see none of this. <laughs> so listen, y'all. Everybody in the audience, do us a favor. Help us share Tracy's brand. Help her elevate Tracy's brand. Help Tracy make some money, y'all. So maybe she can loan me a dollar too. <laughs> down the line, right? Yo, I got interesting. If you ask for two, I'm gonna ask for three. I see interesting conversation happening on um, on the YouTube side, man. I you know I wonder what y'all think about this. You know, I, think you should. I see it too. You see I it too? too. Yeah, I, I, I see it too. Y'all about to make me spaz on this joint. So before we get off the urban poetical point, I'm gonna probably drop a um um a discount code in the Black Wealth Project group chat. Nice, I think it's my partner. So. Y'all look out for that when we're done the show. We'll 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 hook y'all up for our listeners and our followers. And everything. Nice. That's dope. That's dope. But, That's dope. But drop that comment though, Kamari. Drop that. I comment. think it's got a. Calm down. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. They ready? To, they ready to jump it? Let me sit back and see what happened here. Yeah. So I miss I missed the uh, the commentary for the YouTube uh, conversation. So I guess it was, I just... uh, it was Melanie. Saying... Melanie. I think it was Alton oh. that started it. At eight thirty-eight, yeah, that one. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, I don't care. I, I, man, listen, leave your wife friends home, man. I, I don't know, what you, leave your wife friends home, man. That's hey, a man. celebration of black culture, man. Leave your wife friends home, man. I don't Why think you do? tell it about skin color, man. An interracial couple celebrating shouldn't distract you from the why. I agree with that. Oh man, principles are more important than aesthetics. That's not an aesthetic. Uh, that's, that's not. not a, I agree with Corey. That's not an aesthetic. It's not an aesthetic. Now, yeah, no, I. But let's not act like y'all don't know what you're talking about now. <laughs> oh, that's not an aesthetic. <laughs> I'm All right, Adrian is hilarious, yo. Adrian is hilarious. All right, listen, y'all, we being silly now. All right, so I don't want to hold anybody else up. Yes, and I am hungry. I need my fiddles. So listen, again, I appreciate you all for being here. Share out Tracy's brand, y'all. Help Tracy yeah. get the bag so I can get a dollar, two, or three like Corey. And we will see you all next week at 7 p.m. Thank you all. Peace, Bye-bye. peace, peace, family. Leave your white friends home. <laughs>